Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to use a texture hopper. So obviously the mud's going to go into this thing and it's gravity fed. So it goes down the funnel into here. This gets hooked up right here to my air compressor and it's just the same compressor I use for trim on the same pressure setting so I don't change anything and it's at about 120 psi. And so it's also going to have some nozzles right here that determine how big the blobs are that come out. And this one is not my preferred one. I used to have a Marshalltown, which I liked much better because it just had this plastic dial that had a bunch of different size holes that you could rotate. And this one you actually have to swap out this head and there's only three sizes. Anyways, I believe I have the medium one on here. Now let's take a quick look at how this is gonna work. So first you're gonna hook it up. How this works is no air comes out when I just pull the trigger. So when I first bought one, I thought that's how it was gonna work. As soon as I pulled this, the air comes out. But actually the air is controlled by this thing right here. So as soon as I open this, it goes full bore. And a regular trim compressor is not actually the kind of compressor you're gonna use if you need to do big jobs professionally. You need a compressor that keeps this at a continuous PSI the whole time, so it never stops running. Whereas this one fills up, stops running, drains and then fills up again. So there's a bit of waiting involved using a regular trim compressor. But it's more than adequate for doing a small wall or patches. So how it works is you open this up and then you pull this and that allows the mud to go through and be spewed out right here. And then you've also got this other adjustment back here. So right now I'm loosening it. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make this little piston thing in here go further back. And I don't actually know how that changes it at all. We'll do a quick experiment. But the more I dial this back, the further back that thing goes. So first, you wanna get your mud mix kinda of thin. I've got mine runny like skim coating mud would be. And this is just all purpose light. It's maybe not the best choice, but I'm not about to go buy a box of texture mud just for this. I did this yesterday and I got a great splatter texture but it was my first time ever trying to do knockdown. And so there's some things I learned about it. One was I sprayed it too thin. Two, I wiped it too soon after. Let's take a look at how that looks. What that ended up doing was it made the flat parts too big and there's not quite enough definition in the parts in between the flat spots. The only part that worked out was the part where I did the nail pops. So the rest of the wall was primed and this was bare drywall mud. So that taught me two things. One, I need to spray the texture on a little bit heavier so that there's more definition between the flat spots. Two, I need to wait a little bit longer before wiping it down. Because when you wipe it down too soon, what happens is it all flattens out together and you don't get those nice little knockdown spots. You get long, big knockdown spots that don't look as pleasing. So today is take number two for the knockdown, but the splatter is easy. First, I want to get the hopper well attached to the nozzle with this little ring clamp. The last thing I want is this moving around and shifting on me, or even worse, falling off. Next, I'm going to just place it in this bucket right here, and I'm going to pour some of this thin down mud into here. And because I'm not doing a huge area, I don't need too much. The more you put in here, the heavier it gets. I've got a clean 10 inch knife for knocking down. And I'm going to test first. I'm going to test my spray on this scrap piece of drywall. Okay, let's find out what this little dial back here does. What you need to do is you need to undo this really quick and then start pulling the trigger as soon as you have it aimed where you want to have it aimed. And you better make sure that you have your work area protected. So if you don't want it on the ceiling or if you don't want it on anything else around you, floor especially, you want to protect your area because it's messy. So after dialing that back and opening it up more, the mud came out a lot faster and in bigger blobs than it was yesterday. <laughs> that right there is a splatter texture. You're done. I think splatter and orange peel are often confused and also around every area you're going to have different terminology for things. But let's take a look at what is closer to an orange peel that I did yesterday. And the reason it's called an orange peel is because it looks like the inside of an orange peel. So let's take a look at this. And this is just where I did a splatter texture with a lighter spray and sprayed it a little bit heavier. So that's my orange peel. It's just more sprayed. 
I'm now going to close this up a lot and see what the spray looks like. So now I can't pull the trigger as far. So what that did was it made the spray super fine. So that wouldn't really be good for anything that I'm doing. Well, I liked it with the bigger splatters, so I'm gonna dial it way back and I'm gonna test on this thing right here. Still not enough. As you can see, the compressor starts running pretty quickly and you keep spraying, your pressure drops and the blobs get bigger and slower. When you start spraying your actual finished wall, what you need to do is you need to keep it moving. Yesterday what I did was I started on the perimeter and then I worked my way in and actually that didn't work out for me because what happened was I had this band all around the perimeter that got over sprayed. One thing you need to know about texture is it can go from good to bad really fast. And once you over spray an area, you can't take it off and under spray it. When you've got under sprayed areas next to over sprayed areas, it gets really hard to fix and it looks really obvious to a critical eye. Well, enough talking, start spraying. Waiting. I've got a few areas I want to touch up a little still. It's probably only been about a minute since I sprayed this. It's all still looking really wet. And what I want to do to try and dial down when to wipe this down is I'm going to wipe down one row of it right now. Let's take a look at that. So I've got a nice clean 10 inch blade and I'm also looking to make sure there's no points that are tipped the wrong way. So most blades have a curve in them. So right now I've got it so the convex side is going to go against the wall so it's not going to dig in and leave marks from the edges. I did that really lightly. It's not bad, but it's still a little bit too flattened out in my opinion. So let's give it a bit longer. It's been about another minute. It's still shiny, but it's losing its sheen a little bit. That's getting a little closer to what I'm thinking of. Next one. So I'm just gonna go over the whole thing now. Pressing a little bit harder because it's had some more time to set up. Oh, I pressed too hard there. Okay, gentler. Lift up gently at my lift off. Not pushing hard, you guys. Being really gentle. And I think I'm on the verge of being too late. But it's not pulling yet. Well guys, this knockdown stuff is kind of tricky. I'm mostly happy with this, and I think most homeowners would never be able to pick it apart, but I know you pros could see that these flat spots are a bit too wide again. And I think what I did wrong here this time, is this time I oversprayed it, and again wiped it a bit too soon. So that timing is critical. And hey, to all you pros that are watching this, I know you're probably already typing your comment about what I did wrong, but I want to hear when is the right time to wipe this down and what are your secrets? So guys, I think this video is going to give you a general idea of how to spray texture and what to do, but I want you to read through the comments to what all the pros are going to tell you and that's where you're going to really get the best insight on timing and exact procedures. Because again, this is only the second time I've ever tried a knockdown. We don't do it in this area. The only place I've ever seen knockdown is immediately after I cross the border and in some parts 
east of where I live, they start to do a little bit of knockdown. So I'm just trying to imitate what I've seen. So right here, I'm pretty close. It's a bit fat there, but right here, that's a nice knockdown. That's what I'm used to seeing. And here's where it blends in, so you can easily blend it into an old knockdown finish. Let's see. So it's not bad. It would pass under most circumstances, but up here, it starts to get too fat. The voids are too small and the flat parts are too big. So you guys, I know I'm being a little bit hard on myself and probably a lot of you guys would be pretty happy if you got those results, but I'm a perfectionist and I wanna be giving you guys the best advice. So again, read through the comments, use this as a general guide. So you're gonna be able to get your orange peel, you're gonna be able to get your splatter, and now at least you've got a pretty good starting point for your knockdown. Anyways, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. That's how I textured a wall and knocked it down. I hope this video helps. And now it's time to dry this out, get some holes in it, and start patching some textured walls. Anyways, thanks for watching you guys. Till the next video.